I'm happy you're back here learning today. Let's start with our morning meeting. All right, let's start with our greeting. How about we do telephone? Ready? Sing with me. Hey, Ed Markey. Hey, Natalie. Hey, Brayden. Hey, Cassandra. Hey, Annis. Hey, Isabel. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Drayden. Hey, Kennedy. Hey, Anderson. Hey, Valentina. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, Sophia. Hey, Emily. Hey, Aria. Hey, Sebastian. Hey, Junalise. Hey, Aubriana. Hey, Mariana. Hey, Alexia. Someone's calling my name. Hey, Alexia, Mariana, Abriana, Judah, Lee, Sebastian, Aria, Emily, Sophia, Kimberly, Valentina, Anderson, Kennedy, Draven, Anthony, Isabel, Annis, Cassandra, Brayden, Natalie, and then Marky. I think I hear it again. You're wanted on the telephone. If it isn't the one of nine minions, I'm not home. All right, our share today is today's a special day because it is my mommy's birthday. She is 58 years old. She probably doesn't want me telling that on the internet. So, Mom, don't watch this. All right. And now we are going to do our poem activity. Okay. Today, let's do Fido. Ready? Say it with me. Fido. I have a little dog. And his name is Fido. He is nothing but a pup. He can stand on his hind legs if you hold his front legs up. Okay, time for our message. Let me turn it so you can see. You can read with me. Dear Room 109 Minions, Good morning. Did you like the learning video yesterday? How many more is six than four? Love, Miss Minion. Let's see, can we figure out how many more six is than four? Let's look at the number six. I'll hold it on my hands. Now let's think about the number four. One, two, three, four. How many more to make six? One more makes five. Two more make six. One, two. Six is two more than four. We'll talk more about that idea in math today, but I wanted to get your brains ready. All right, time for Reader's Workshop. All right. We've been talking all about nonfiction and what nonfiction readers do. Let's review. Nonfiction readers learn all about a topic, like volcanoes, or trucks, or spicy jalapeno sandwiches. They look at the title to get our brains ready. That means you look at the title and think, hmm, what is this book going to teach me? all about. Then we look at photos and real life drawings to learn even more. Like yesterday, we learned all about the police car and what it looked like. Today I want to teach you something else that nonfiction readers do. Today I'm going to teach you that nonfiction authors write true facts to teach the reader true information. I added that to our post there. Nonfiction readers learn true facts. When you read a nonfiction book, all of the information in it, all the things they tell you, are real things that you can learn. So when you read nonfiction, you can learn true facts that make you smarter and make you know more about the world. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the book, How Far Is the Sun? We were reading it before school ended. I'll post the video on our class page so that you can watch How Far Is the Sun in case you missed it. All right, let's look at this book.
Wow, a car cannot drive to the sun. But if it could, the trip would take 152 years. Is that real? Of course it's real. It's a nonfiction book. It's teaching me true facts. Hmm, I didn't know that before. But now I know something new about the sun. I know that cars can't drive there. And I know that if they could, it's so far away that it would take 152 years. That's so far. Let's see what else we can learn. A spaceship could reach the sun in 156 days, but the sun is too hot for a spaceship to reach. Whoa, I didn't know that. I didn't know that spaceships can't go to the sun, but now I do. Now I know the sun is too hot and you can't go there in a spaceship because if you, it's too hot, you get too warm. Miss Minion, oh my goodness, this is so cool. Oh my goodness, where are the aliens? Where are the magic people? Where are the talking animals? Like talking snakes! Psh, silly Mish Minion. There's no talking animals. There's no talking snakes. There aren't even aliens. This book is real. It's non-fiction. It's all about true information. Things that exist in real life. Even though we can't actually see outer space with our own eyes, and we probably haven't been in a rocket ship. It's still true. It's still real. Today and every day, when you read your nonfiction books, I want you to see what true facts can you learn. If you learn something new, have your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, brother, sister, auntie, uncle, whoever lives with you, send me a message and tell me what you learned. Pause now to do your reading homework. Pausa ahora para hacer tu tarea de lectura. Today's reading homework is Tarea de lectura de hoy es Read your nonfiction books, your real life books, and think about what true facts you learned. Maybe have a grown up help you read the words. Lee sus libros de no ficción, libros de la vida real, y piense en los hechos reales que aprendió. Tal vez un adulto te ayude a leer. Las palabras. All right, today for Writer's Workshop, we're going to add some words to our first page. Let's start by looking at our whole book. You should have a title. Mine is The Red Bus. A picture and your name by Miss Minion. Now we're on the first page. We should have a picture and some labels. Today, we're going to write some true facts. Just like we learned in Reader's Workshop, nonfiction authors write about true facts. Since we're writing a nonfiction book, everything we write has to be true teaching information. Nothing made up. All right, let me look at my red bus. What could I write about it that's true? Could I say, ooh, the bus is purple? No. I could say the bus is amazing. But that's my opinion. That's what I think. That's not a true fact. Hmm, what true fact? The bus is red. That's a true fact. Let me write that. The. Oh, the is a sight word. I know that one. If you need help with sight words, you can look in your green writing book, writing folder, or you can look at some of these cards that you have at home. Okay, the. T-H-E spells the, the, the. Remember, we start on the left, and I'm going to draw a capital uppercase T because it's the first word of the sentence. Notice that my T is right in between the skyline and the ground line. 
It doesn't come up here and it doesn't go down there. T H E. The. Again, notice where my letters are. They're not up here, they're not down there. They're nice and neat using the skyline, the middle line, and the bottom line. The bus. Two finger space. Say good job, Miss Minion. You listen for the sounds in bus. The bus is oh, that's another sight word. Two finger space. I S spells is is is. Again, look at how nice and neat my letters are. Notice that I'm using lowercase letters in the middle of my sentence. The bus is Red. Hmm. What could I write? R -r 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 -r. Oh, r -r -r -r. like ring. The bus is r red. The bus is red. Okay, at the end, I'm going to add a period. Every sentence needs a period at the end. Say, good job, Miss Minion. You wrote a sentence. It starts with an uppercase letter and it ends with a period. Pause now to do your writing homework. Pausa ahora para hacer tu tarea de escritora. Today's writing homework is La tarea de escritora de hoy es Write a true fact sentence on the first page. Escriba una oración de hechos verdaderos en la primera página. Hi! Today for math workshop, we're going to be thinking about the comparing strategies we know and using them to answer questions like how much more or how many more. Let's go over our strategies. We have matching where we line up one to one and see what's left, see which line is longer. We have fair share where we take them away and see what's left. And then we have count and record where you count and write down the number in each group and then you think which number is bigger. You can think by counting out loud or looking on the number line. Today, I'm going to teach you something new. Let's get out our marbles, our cubes, and our whiteboards. Let's start by thinking about how much more or how many more. We're going to use our strategy today called matching. All right, I have some cubes here and some marbles. You don't have to make this one. You can just watch. I'm going to line them up using the matching strategy. I make sure each one has a body. All right, think in your head, which is more? The yellow cubes or the marbles? That's right, the yellow cubes has more because their line is longer. Now, the new part is to think how many more? These are all the same, but there is one more yellow cube. This means that there is one more yellow cube than marbles, and there is one less marble than yellow cubes. You can use our words more, less, and same as. Let's try another one.
All right, I have some marbles. I have some marbles and some cubes. Let's start by using the strategy matching. I'm going to line them up one to one. Remember, they each need a buddy. If you run out of space, you can push them down a little bit like me. All right, think, which has more? Which has less? That's right, the marbles has more because its line is longer. The cubes have less because its line is shorter. How many more? Let's count. One, two, three. There are three more marbles than yellow cubes. There are three less yellow cubes than marbles. Are you ready to try it on your own? Okay, I'm going to line them up. I want you to tell me how many more and how many less. Which one has more? That's right, the marbles have more. How do you know? That's right, we know because the marbles line is longer. How many more marbles than cubes? That's right, there are two more. One, two. How many less cubes than marbles? That's right, there are two less cubes than marbles. Pause now to do your math homework. Pause ahora para hacer tu tarea de matemáticas. Today's math homework is Tarea de Matemáticas de hoy es Play, match up, and figure out how many more and how many less. Have a family member make two piles, one of cubes and one of marbles, to play just like I did. Make sure when you match them up they all have a body. Juega un partida y calcula cuantos más y cuantos menos. Haga que miembro de la familia haga dos pilas. Una de cubos y otra de canicas, para jugar como lo hice yo. Asegurse de que cada uno tenga un amigo cuando los aline. And practice your number tracing. También practica tu rastreo de números. We go over our sight words. Run. Sap, then say here. Ready? Let's spell them. Run. R-U-N spells run, run, run. Sat. S-A-T spells sat, sat, sat. Then. T-H-E-N spells then, then, then. Say. S-A-Y spells say, say, say. Here. H-E-R-E -E spells here, here, here. For homework today, I want you to mix up all of your magnetic letters. And then try and build them again. 
you can pause it on this screen so you remember. Pause the video now and make our sight words using magnetic letters. Pausa el video ahora y crea nuestras palabras de uso visual con letras magnéticas. All right, it's time to take out your handwriting books. Today, we're going to work on uppercase and lowercase b and uppercase and lowercase d. Let's start with uppercase b. Watch me first. When you make an uppercase b, you start on the top at the skyline. You pull down, up, around, in, back, Again, you start at the top, the skyline, you pull down, back up, around, in, and back around. But notice how mine come back in right about that middle line. Also notice that mine don't come up here and don't come down there. They stay in between the skyline and the ground line. Silly Ms. Minion. Your hand got a little shaky there. Your turn. Open up your handwriting book and practice your B's now. Don't forget to keep your letters in between the skyline and the ground line. Make them nice and neat. Make them look like mine. Notice how I'm staying in between the top line and the bottom line. See how I use the dotted middle line to help me? You can do that too. Make them nice and neat. Do you mean be like b b b braided Did Miss Schminion look at you learning? Say go Miss Schminion, go Miss Schminion. Make our lowercase b. Watch me first. When you make a lowercase b, you start at the skyline. You pull down, up to the middle line, and around. Again, start at the skyline, down to the ground line. Pull up to the middle line and around. All right, it's your turn. Practice it in your handwriting book. See how I use the middle line to help me? And I keep it in between the skyline and the ground line. Okay, we're gonna now make uppercase D's. D -d -d dog. D -d 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 the 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 draven. All right, you start at the skyline. You come pull down, pull back up along, out and in. Again, pull down, pull back up, around and down. All right, your turn. one we're going to practice today is our lowercase d. For a lowercase d, we actually start 
right there at the middle line. We go around, up, and back down. That's a tricky one. Again, start at the middle line, go around, straight up, and back down. One more time. Middle line, go around, straight up, and back down. Your turn. Remember to start at the middle line, go around, and then go up and down. See how I use the middle line to help me? And I keep it in between the skyline and the ground line. That's all the time we have today. Your homework will be posted on the screen after this. Time to sing goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Your homework will be posted on the next slide. Make sure that you add a sticker to your sticker chart to show that you watched the video and did your homework today. <gasps> Remember to add a sticker each day you do learning. If you do any learning this week on Saturday and Sunday, you can add a sticker. There's no video tomorrow or Sunday, but there'll be read-alouds and other things I'll post in case you want to practice. All right, see you on Monday.